Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be having a look at Windows Whistler build 2211 and now this is probably the first build we can form, sort of identify as a Whistler build um, or a very early XP build, whatever you want to call it um, and there are, there are a few reasons uh, for that but before we do that I'm going to have to show you the weird install process which you're not going to believe but uh, it goes like this, so after typing Whistler 221 um, you then need to select Windows 2000 and go next, I'm going to give it 512 megs of RAM uh, virtual hard drive, blah 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 set that to 8, oop, eight gigs and the next thing you've got to do is go into settings, go to storage and a storage controller, it's got to be a floppy controller and find an MS-DOS 6.22 boot diskette as I just have and then boot it up now that may sound rather strange that I'm putting MS-DOS on this but it will all hopefully make a little bit of sense in a minute because you can't actually boot directly from um, the Windows Whistler build 2211 ISO file because it all goes wrong. Um, yeah, so it's rather strange. I mean, virtually everyone knows how to install MS DOS 6.22, but if you don't, I have got a video on the channel uh, which hopefully can help you out a little bit. Um, I do lots of things with MS DOS. 6.22 it's very handy like if you want to install Windows 3.1 then really you need to um, obviously use this first and you'll be surprised at how long this setup process um, this whole sort of blue screen double line sort of setup process lasts this um, was made in the early 90s and it survived well this whole MS-DOS setup really was very early 90s and then it survived all the way through to XP um, XP Service Pack 3 which was released in 2008 I believe um, yeah so certainly that whole setup process has lasted anyway okay so um, as you can see MS-DOS 6.22 is now installed and the next thing we need to do is choose another disk image and that will need to be 98 seconds edition and that one so uh, you can't, well actually I'll just quickly check that I've got the right one yeah so you can't actually do anything from within MS-DOS it happens later um, but as you can see, yeah, that's the MS DOS one. Yeah. Um, so if I reset the virtual machine, I believe the boot order is correct. So I should just boot straight into the 98 startup. Here we go. And you need to start computer with CD ROM supports. It's going to take a while. Oh, here we go. So uh, now that's all started started up and ready we then need to insert the uh, Windows Whistler 2211 and ISO file and let's just think. so up here as you can see the uh, drive is letter D so if I go to the D directory Yeah, as you can see there, that is the uh, Whistler 2211 setup disk there. Now, this whole thing sounds weird because we go from MS-DOS to the 90A setup disk and it's just strange. So, yeah, it might seem a bit weird, but um, I have got my notes here and it involves the i386 folder, from what I can remember. So I've done some research on this last week, but I haven't actually got around to making a video until now. Well, I did, but it all failed, so... <laughs> um, naturally. So it's i386. And backslash winnt.exe. And let's hope it works. 
Yes, it does. And from this point on, it's basically okay. Um, a load of weird stuff happens, and a load of complicated stuff happens, but, um, I mean, I don't know how MS-DOS somehow, um, obviously made installing this possible, but if you try to be directly from the CD, it blue screens. And this is the only other way I've found to do it, so... It works, I suppose. And this whole thing about, um... Smart drive, forget it, don't really matter anyway. In VirtualBox, it don't matter. Now it's just going to be a waiting process. I'll speed up the video here so. Okay, so here is an interesting thing. Um, the yeah, MS-DOS space portion of setup is now complete, so you can take out the floppy diskette now, as it says, and to restart the computer. You don't want to boot any, you don't want to boot from the CD because it just doesn't work. Uh, and you can press OK there. It is now for some reason dual booted with MS-DOS. Not sure why it does that, but it just does. And now's the part when it should actually work, hopefully. Here we go. Um, so, as you can see, uh, it's detected that it's an evaluation version of uh, Windows, and it's still got the Windows 2000 branding simply because it's so early in the development of XP they haven't bothered changing it. So, if we press enter and enter again, and F8, and unpartition space, NTFS. Basically, I can't tell this apart. Well, apart from that evaluation thing, it looks identical to the Windows 2000 setup process. And it's named it Drive E. It's weird to have a Windows installation with a drive layer of E. Not sure why it's copying the files over again, but oh well. Let's press Enter. So here's the boot screen, it looks identical to the Windows 2000 boot screen as with many other things in this build mm. Ok, so as you can see we've got the mouse pointer integration, so that's ok uh, and we can press next and it will start installing the devices I'm going to speed it up again here because this is going to also take forever so here's the locale settings this is basically the same as the Windows 2000 locale settings nothing really different at all actually. So the setup for this build is almost completed now and one of the really interesting things that I've noticed is it hasn't asked me for a product key or anything like that which makes me think I shouldn't have even changed the BIOS clock back to the correct date because uh, there wasn't really much point seeing as um, well, seeing as it's most probably cracked anyway, so, yeah. Okay, so now it's completely completed. I reckon uh, when it boots back into Windows, it will most probably um, have some weird networking thing which it will want me to do. As they always do. As I suspected, it's got a network identification wizard. So, 
And next, next. And as you heard, the Windows startup sound played. I'm going to try to get a little bit better resolution on this. There we go, that's slightly better. I will just resize um, the screen recorder one moment. Right, so, um, resize the screen and got as high a resolution as I'm ever going to get on this. Uh, now, the first feature that I want to talk about is above the build string here uh, Windows, uh, well, Whistler, Windows 2001 Professional. Um, now, obviously, that's the first mention of Whistler I've seen so far. And uh, Windows 2001, well, I suppose that's what they were sort of expecting the final name to be. Um, and Professional, well, this was going to be the professional version of Windows. Um, and as I mentioned before in the Windows Neptune video, they do carry on with the idea that uh, the next home edition version of Windows was going to be, well, it would have the option of an NT file system. So that was quite good. Um, and obviously, um, what was I going to, oh, had a complete mental block then, sorry, one moment. Um, yeah, so obviously Windows, uh, Neptune had, um, the NT file system for a home edition version of Windows, and so did this, so that's good. Uh, and we can check out Windows. So as you can see there, it's still for version 5.0 uh, in line with Windows 2000 but uh, obviously they hadn't changed it over to 5.1 yet and it's interesting, uh, Windows Neptune had a version of 5.5 so rather interesting really um, and if I have a look on my homework again it has got a control panel layout as well, which is rather similar to the uh, Windows ME startup. Uh, what am I talking about? It's got a control panel which is similar to the Windows ME control panel, and I'm sorry about the bad colours there, but if I attempt to install VirtualBox guest editions on this VM, it will not work. It won't log in for some reason. Um, unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that. But yeah, it's just a problem with this build. Um, and obviously, um, Whistler 2202 was the build that we know about before this. Um, and I did do a video on that on the channel. And that also had some mentions of Windows 2001. So I suppose this sort of trend of having Windows 2001 and the systems car carried on for quite a while and Windows 2001 I guess that was a reference to the 9x versions of Windows um, so like Windows 95, Windows 98, uh, Windows 2000 and Windows Millennium Edition um, and I guess like they didn't call well one thing that I've always realised is I wonder why they didn't call uh, Windows ME Windows 2000 Home Edition and I suppose that's mainly because they were saving that for, um, obviously, Windows XP. And Windows XP had a million and one versions. Um, well, it seems like it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's why they were saving that up. And one other thing as well that I've got noted down here is apparently the logon screen is identical to the Windows Neptune logon screen. Or apparently not. Well, that's what I've got written down on my notes. I guess that must be fake then. Um, or it might have the Windows Nicktoon log on the screen somewhere in the system files. But yeah, apparent, apparently it had the Windows Nicktoon log on the screen. Obviously not. So anyway, uh, thank you all very much for watching. There's really nothing else to talk about on this build. Um, as with the last build, it's well, I mean, I've only been using it for a little while, but uh, one other thing as well, local area connection. Now, this was something that um, I was thinking about earlier. In um, Windows codename Neptune, they had an integrated firewall in Windows. Now, if I'm right, they will have a firewall. No, they don't have a firewall there. How strange. 
No, in Windows Neptune, it, that was laid out differently. And, um, yeah, no, it's not there anymore. They did have an option uh, under local area connections, properties, and share it on the sharing tab. It had an integrated firewall in Neptune. I guess they, for some weird reason, got rid of it, which was strange. Um, and they've replaced it with no firewall, <laughs> which is a bit ridiculous. But yeah, how strange. Anyway, that basically rounds it up for this video. Um, I like I said before, I do hope you enjoyed watching this, and it has been a little bit brief, but um, well probably won't be brief once I look at how long it actually is in the editing but uh, yeah so that's basically it for today and as usual I cannot remember what the next build of Whistler is called uh, so till the next build see you later